2010 and 2011 and he won his single medal and I'm looking really forward for the Olympics. I think he will be ready also there. And I cross my finger very much. I'm sure everyone in the hall here in Dortmund does as well. Wherever he's going, every tournament he's playing in Europe, he attracts a crowd, especially here in his country, Germany. Left-handed player on the bottom of the screen, Timo Bo. 31 years of age, world ranked currently at six. Used to be one. And his opponent is João Monteiro, as we saw, 29 years of age. Before they put the, his, his full name inside in the Bundesliga news, always I see Ciao Pedro Andrande Selgas Montero. I'd like to mention this one time. All right. You see the upside of having an expert at your side. <laughs> Actually, he's practicing in WSA. There, it's no need to have him to, to use his first four names. He's just Monty. Monty. As it were, facing here, Timo Ball. See again, 29 years old, Monty. World rank currently at 54, used to be 41 in 2010. Left hand against left hand here. Playing all together, a quite reasonable season so far, Montero, in the German Liga, also in the Champions League. Also now in, in the world ranking, he, claim, he climbed up, like after 2010, he was half year having trouble with some injuries there. Now he's really back on track and uh, it's not only the world championship, he wants to play well, but also after two weeks in Olympic qualification, that's of course his, his, his big dream, together with Marcos Freitas, they both have to compete. And in this moment, maybe we have to uh, uh, speak shortly about uh, Thiago Apollonia, who's unfortunately injured. And uh, from maybe we wish him all the best. Maybe he has a chance to be ready for the world qualification, which will take place in uh, some weeks later in Qatar after the Europeans, which will take place, I think, in 15th of April in Luxembourg. That's right. Top player of Portugal is missing due to an injury. I think he's hospitalized not far from here in Dusseldorf. Wish him all the best for his recovery as Timo Bo in this match has the first service, Lavo. As far as international games are concerned, that Timo Bo has never lost to João Monteiro. Yep. Won five. Out of five matches. One thing we have to keep in mind from João Montero, he's always fighting, like he's trying to move around, he's moving, he's very, very athletic, he's willing to, do, to work for his, uh, for his points. He's a little bit weaker backhand than in comparison uh, uh, Marcos Freitas, but he's a little bit stronger forehand. But uh, due to the fact that his backhand is not that strong, Timo really has this opportunity to attack him through the backhand and it will be not so easy for Monty to find here a close game. So far the money is on the favorite. Timo Ball already up 3-1 in this first game. Doing the so-called reverse service. Racket moving away from his body. Timo also being known as a player who can generate a lot of different kinds of spin with that movement. Hitting the ball early for topspin serve, hitting the ball late for underspin. Very hard to see for the opponent. Oftentimes creating an opportunity to get the first topspin in. Good quality on the foreign topspin here. Very hard to bring back for Joao Monteiro. Oh. 
Oops. <laughs> Nice one. But this is like something we really have to see in left against left. Usually the one who will win these kind of left against left duels, who has a little bit better backhand there. Timo was opening one ball also with backhand, pushing Monty very deep out, and then he can follow a little bit earlier with forehand. See also a little bit like this. Also Timo was nearly losing stability. He could start a little bit more aggressive on the first backhand. And Monty has to move much more in comparison to Timo. Also, didn't seem to be positioned right for that top spin. Most likely due to the excellent placement of Timo Ball. Really is off to a good start here. 8 3 his lead in the first game. And as you said, Richard, I, rem I mentioned the Chinese head coach Liu Guliang saying that in a game left against left handed, the first one who plays along the line usually takes the point. see how this will translate into this game as ball now is at 9-3 good start right off the bat here Timo Ball no need to find his way into the match he's already there and he's really total control Monty has big troubles in returning. Doesn't matter the reverse service or the side spin up spin or side spin down spin. Giving Timo always the chance to attack. And as we mentioned before, Monty's backhand is not that strong right now. Timo is controlling this through the backhand, backhand line and has the possibility to follow after. Difficult way, long way for Monty. Exactly, not much to coach here for Jörg Roskopf as his player Timo Ball takes the first game very convincingly 11-3 off of Joao Montero in this way after you win one game 11-3 it's a little bit like in this way keep in mind that you keep the concentration like these little things stay close to the table change the the service in a little bit uh, not always on the same position yeah keep in mind that maybe Monty could try like this or could try like that so uh, these are the two three things you will, you will mention in a position like this after winning 11-3 because in general, as you said, there's not so much to coach. Timo Ball looking concentrated. That is his trademark shot. Soft top spin. So much spin on the ball. But he can do that one as well. Fast off the bounce. And that's something he has to also use from time to time in order not to be reduced on this soft topspin to change the timing. That's something you have to do in table tennis. And as Timo has to play sometimes fast, also the Chinese has to put sometimes the softer topspin inside. Look how lightning fast Timo Ball steps around in the backhand corner to play forehand topspin. And what a topspin it was. Moving around, accelerating it even more. Nice one. Giving João Montero next to no time to react. Timo Ball, dare say, top form. At least in this match. And you're right, he's in total control. 3-1 already his lead. So far, no wonder he has not dropped the game. Germany as a team seeded second in this tournament. So I think large portions of the crowd <coughs> looking forward for a possible finals match between Germany and China on Sunday. We'll see if both, both teams make it this far. So far, good performances by both the Chinese team and the German team here as well. And these two teams also, they showed the best performance also in comparison to Korea or to uh, um, Japan, who were really not that stable. Japan lost against Poland. Korea had very, very close match against Taiwan. Close to lose match ball for, for Taipei. 
So really Germany and China, they really have been the two teams who have been a really, really good performance so far from all the players they put inside. Six two. Top spin attack right onto the elbow of João Monteiro, forcing him to make a decision between backhand and forehand. These kinds of decisions cost him time that he does not have to begin with. Also, the body language. I mean, as, I, as we mentioned before, Monty keeps on always to fight and keeps on to, to stay inside the game. He will try everything. But like, if you check the body language carefully, I think Monty has maybe also not the full belief. Yeah, you see a little bit, head is down. And now the last two, three rallies, also Monty was trying a lot to risk with backhand, not only with his forehand, but it's like a wall. Team was not missing at all. That's right, flawless performance so far. He's not amused. To say the least. 3-8 from his perspective. Maybe with that excellent service receive. Good topspin into the body of Timo Ball. João Monteiro with his four point. Still four points down. But every comeback has to start at some point. Maybe it is here. But also during the longer rallies, Timo has the upper hand here. 9-4, this match is going so fast. Yeah. You see, to get to the point, Timo is able to return nearly all service of Monty short. Monty has to play one more time short. This ball is not short, but half long gives Timo the opportunity to start. And on the other hand, Monty is not able to return the service of Timo really short. As you can see here, Timo has the chance to topspin the first ball. And now it was a little bit a not concentrated ball from Timo. But usually whenever he starts topspinning, he's not missing, he's winning the point. Exactly, he's limiting the options of his opponent with his spinny topspin as an opener. Most players tend to block it, which allows Timo to move in for the fast one. Great flick here, by the way, João Monteiro. Quick to the table, movement of the wrists. One point averted, sit still. Four game points for Timo Ball. High toss service, resulting in indirect error. We don't see that every day, but still it happens. Even on a professional level, Timo Ball in total control so far. Takes the second game as well off of João Monteiro, 11-6. Losing, if you will, twice as much points to his opponent. So maybe twice the amount to coach for Jörg Roskopf. Going for a risky serve there. It's going to be long. That might be also another option for, for Monty in order to have a good start. Maybe using this long service, get the game a little bit fast, having the possibility to follow after with his forehand a little bit risky more. Because if you keep his regular way of playing, he will be able to beat many players, but not Timo on this day. That is exactly what I think Ricardo Faria has told his player, João Montero. Try something different. <laughs> Timo Ball just picks up where he left off. A 
And that's something to really we have to mention. The way of concentrating team was able to do. Many players we see also in, let's say, Pro Tour after 3-0 up, then they lose concentration, they lose one or two games. You will see this Timo like this not very often. He's 3-0 up and he keeps concentration, so very often he's saving some power there. He's saving some energy, which is not too bad. Because the World Championship, you have to play the best at the end. And you mentioned it before, I really also hope for the crowd here and also for table tennis, we see this final Germany against China. High hopes for the future, both of us, Richard Pause and me. Still a long way to go. We are at the third day of the event, still group stage. So far, things are looking bright for the German team. Is their player Timo Ball now once again leads in this game. 2-0 he's up. 3-2 his lead. Nice. Good flick making it look like it was going cross court. Yeah. But I was wondering how much of these mind games can you really do during a match? How much of these points making look like it's one thing but it's a completely different thing? You, do, you, do, you don't do many like this. But like if you are able to do this once or twice a game, that's enough for the opponent. You have the backbreaker flip or the backbreaker topspin in order to change in the, in the wrong direction the opponent. Once or twice, that's enough. Bit of showmanship coming up here. Timo Ball trying to play defensively, misses the... First attempt though, four to three, perhaps already playing to the crowd, could have attacked that one. A little bit early to play for the crowd. It is, four all. Service half long, lost a little bit concentration. Also, we said before he will not lose it. That is called the commentator's curse. Yep. <laughs> First time you say something, the complete opposite happens. <laughs> there he is again. 5 0. Timo Ball managed to equalize, not letting his opponent go that far off. You see the immense quality. It's perfect technique, really. Yeah. Oof. A little late. Sloppy on the footwork, to be honest. He thought that Monty will not be able to turn here. And Monty is good. In one moment he finds his rhythm, he can keep this topspin, topspin rally. He's very well known for being able to keep and to move a lot. You see, and now Timo is a little bit, as you said, like lost concentration, service maybe a little bit more upspin than Timo was expecting, giving Monty the chance to attack directly after his service. And he's done a fine job of it. 7-5 now, first time he leads. Yeah, and it was 4-2, Timo was up, now 7-5 down. That's usually quite some points in a row for Monty. Doesn't happen so often for Timo. Oh, that was unbelievable. Although a bit of luck here on the point for Timo Ball. Look at how he receives off court this powerful backhand topspin. So much spin on the ball. Can't you see? Net there a lit. And we say, like, the table is not only long, but the table is also wide. And you see how wide Timo was doing that ball. Good angle, no doubt. Very, very talented player, Timo Ball. Probably Rossi will mention now that uh, two times service of Timo is getting half long, giving Monty the chance to attack directly. And also, Timo won now this ball with a good back and topspin. It was also the back and topspin. Of course, in the beginning, he has to play this back and topspin because the service was getting half long. So he has to keep concentration a little bit there. 
right? The phrase we used earlier was letting go of the gas. Timo must not do that. Keep on accelerating, keep playing like he played in the first two games. Do not lose concentration. Six seven is down with his own service now, the German player. World ranked six. Staying close to the table this time. Very early on the bounce, playing a wide angle that Montero could not return. That one right here, difficult to play. And as we mentioned before, Freitas and Ovcharov ready for the re fast balls in the back end. Team was a little bit more that style of player, ready for the fast ball in forehand. Good flick. Great setup by the service return, Timo Ball. Once again using his wrist, fast movement. Yeah, and it's among, I think, the first time that he's flicking with forehand directly on the service of Monty. Usually before trying to have always short return. That's also something Tim was doing very clever to know when to use what kind of stroke. Next good. point for Montero. Yeah. Eight all. And two times good backhand for Monty. He really improved his backhand. Still not on the same level as Timo, but he's really trying to put more pressure with his backhand now. That service, excellent eye by Timo Ball. It would have been good return for Monty. That is quite uncharacteristically, to be honest. Avoidable mistake, Timo Ball missing the ball entirely. Maybe misjudged it, maybe was a little late, maybe indecisive what to play next. Must not let go, 9-8. But he has so many service variations at hand, at his disposal. This time, under spin, plus side spin. And this is something usually you should not do as player. Monty was thinking before what kind of thing he wanted to do. He didn't read the service, he just like, hey, okay, now I try to flick. And that's something usually it's not going in the right direction. First judge what kind of spin, and then you go for this flick. On the spot thinking required. But now, Montero deservedly works himself up to a game point in this match. 10-9. Crowd tries to lift. Timo Ball up to the level of play he's shown earlier. Nice. Great effort. Switching sides, playing from the backhand side. Long line awarding Drao Montero with his first game. Timo Ball dropping the first game in the tournament. And Monte, I have to say, like after 4 2 be being down, he deserved this game in that way that he was really pushing some pressure with Timo with the backhand of Monte. He really did some, some good rallies, some good balls there. And Timo lost in this way concentration that two, three times his service was going out, a little bit more half long. And uh, as we know from Monte, whenever he's coming to the rallies and ever he's ready to move, he's dangerous for many players. You see, follow it with forehand, also very late the ball, very athletically. And follow the ball now down the line, Timo was turning. Good one. Absolutely. Expertly played. This one may be a bit too passive from Timo Ball. Could have accelerated, played a little topspin on it. Though, as we've said earlier as well, Easy to say from the commentator's box. If you're at the table, things may look completely different. Nonetheless, 2-1 still the lead for Timo Ball. Receiving the service of João Monteiro. You see, like, now it's a little bit different as it was in the beginning. Now Monty is risking more with the backhand and whenever he's risking and he hits that ball he can have the possibility to turn after to follow with a very very strong forehand. Timo has to be the first one to attack.
First time we see him clenching his fist. Ball undoubtedly wants to win it. But a fortune on the side of the Portuguese player. That's something many Portuguese are known like not for being lucky in this moment, <laughs> but for playing these long rallies. It's not only Marcos or Montero, it's also Thiago Apolonio, very well known for having these big spin spin rallies. Good to watch, nice to watch. I was maybe a bit impatient. Joao Montero looking for the quick point, the flick using his arm instead of his wrist. Timo Ball now in the lead. Good service from Montero, trying to catch Timo off guard, catch him by surprise, but to no avail, he was there all along. Very fast reaction from Timo Ball, playing a backhand topspin, even with topspin. This was some years ago, the Chinese used to catch him with a long service, and now Timo, in this way, started to practice a little bit against long service and backhand. Now, usually, he's ready for that, not to miss the first ball. Showing us that he's fast enough to do it. And that one was for a three-point lead again, 5-3. And you see, this is how table tennis sometimes going. 2-2, two -two, a so-called easy mistake of Monty. 3-2 after losing the long service, 4-2. And then now it's so difficult for Monty to come back, 5-2, 6-2. Might be having a total change if he kept the, the track after 2-2, two -two, taking this next ball. Sometimes it's crucial point. You're talking about one point, but sometimes it's so important if you win or lose this point. Exactly. If you're faced with 2-5, you need to play aggressively. You need to look for the point yourself. No use in playing safe. Montero did that, went for the mistake, and now it's 2-6. This one was well placed. It's again right into the body of Timo Ball. I remember a few years ago, this was one of his weaknesses, being pinned down in the backhand and into the body. Terry playing very cleverly right now. Like this quite a bit by him. 4-6. Needs at least two more tricks up his sleeve. Oh. That one was crucial. As we see Montero dissatisfied with his performance there. 7-4. He knows that he has, to, he has to play nearly over his own limit in order to keep close the match against Timo. And I must say he's doing a good job when Timo yep. plays a soft topspin. Immediately moves through the ball with his own topspin. Especially with the backhand. When, when Timo's playing his first topspin a little bit softer with his backhand, Montero has really quite good feeling to have this contra topspin. Attacking one more time, Timo in the backhand side, and then Timo has not the chance to come out of being passive. 5-7. Close match so far, surprisingly. That service, both players are green. And then the umpire does as well. Good movement, Timo Ball spraying the ball, moving his opponent into the backhand side and never let him out of there. And at the end, a little bit of a speed variation. 
Playing a little softer, so Montero had to step a little to, fr to the front, which he misses. Good job, Timo Ball. 5-8 from Montero's perspective. Still stays inside the game. It's like this one more point Timo was not doing. Yeah? That's right. Never manages to separate him entirely from his opponent. Always one point shy of a decisive lead, Timo Ball. Still, table tennis, two points is enough. If he can keep this up to 11. I think that one hit the side though. Yeah. yeah. But again, the attack starts through the back end of Timo. That's right. And once in a while, Timo will try to use the forehand from the backhand side if he's played into his body, which positions him at a great disadvantage for the next one because he doesn't have time to step around and he doesn't have a feeling for the forehand, which will invariably come. And now Timo took the timeout. Good decision, keeping his lead by one point. Timeout not also always used to break momentum, also forces your opponent to think about what he's going to do next. That can lead to mistakes, especially if he has managed to score points beforehand. No question is if Timo is able to play his first topspin with his backhand, not only diagonal, but also down the line to change the position of Monty. Because from backhand side, Monty is playing very aggressive when he has the chance to use his very, very strong forehand. So a little bit to move him in deep forehand. And then again from Monty's side is the question whether he will attack Timo one more time through the middle of backhand, which was quite successful the last point. We'll see after this. Crucial point after the timeout, who will come out on top? It is Timo Ball, allowing his opponent to topspin on his soft topspin, but this time he was there at the table, going for the counter topspin over the table. Very difficult to execute properly. And waiting again in forehand side, other way around a little bit as Dimitri or Marcus Freitas in the first game. Seven nine ball now two points away from victory over João Montero. Going for the banana flick. Yeah, but he was trying the ball down the line. I think he has also this in mind that he's playing a little bit too easy in back and part of Montero. I agree, was the correct decision. Did not execute it correctly though, Timo Ball. Still one point up. That service. Even I saw that. Stop. And now Timo Ball has his first two match points in the game. What will he do? Must not allow Marcos Freitas, excuse me, João Montero to come back into the game the way he did in the third game. Maybe reverse service because this was the service he kept short all the time. Maybe with topspin as well, we'll see. Yep. He does. Going for the soft topspin afterwards. John Montero unable to control the spin on the ball and Timo Ball takes his next match in a convincing fashion after all, after losing a game. Three games to one, the score for the German player. Throwing his team into a lead. 2-0, very convincing. Very comfortable as we go into the third match of the day. And it was also very important that Timo also felt that it might be also having some close matches here during the World Championship. Good fight from Monty, I think good performance here. And also from Timo's side, I think very good that in one moment he also lost one game that he feels he has to work. It's like not enough to play, let's say, 80% because he had to really be ready, kept the concentration and uh, because there will be some more matches to go. We just started this World Championship, but I think it was reasonable performance of Monty, reasonable performance of, uh, of Timo, but finally he controlled this game.